Our scripture reading today is from the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, verse 2. It says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. May God bless our reading as our preacher will be standing to give us more on that. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Uh, it is my pleasure to stand before you today uh, on this beautiful Sabbath morning. I would want to first and foremost thank you, Brother David, for leading us out today. And I uh, also would want to thank our musicians for singing so well uh, few as we are in church it was pleasing and uh, it was loud and clear that we are making joyful noise to our lord thank you brother soma your team of kumbi and uh, sister zaneli mururi sister blanche on the organ and uh, sister suzanne on the flutes that was good music thank you very much and thank you very much, uh, Brother James, in the corner there for the children's story that was uh, put on for us. It was good, I hope, and uh, pray that the little ones, you had uh, the lesson behind the story, and the main lesson behind it is just but what uh, my, my, my sermon is going to be helping. I would also want to welcome our viewers who are not here at church today and uh, who are all over the world who are watching us through the live stream and uh, those also listening to us through our radio channel 87.6. This is Amadeo Church. Let's feel at home and enjoy ourselves as we come to the Lord in singing, as we come to the Lord in prayer and in the short sermon that I'm going to be delivering, I know I'm not going to be delivering it. God is just but using me. I'm just but a vessel. And I say amen and hallelujah to our Lord for using me to present this. Before I go into the sermon, I would want to uh, thank our Lord for things that he does to us in life. I was speaking to... Brother Angus, in the foyer there, so I was asking him, how is Sebastian doing? And he says to me, yeah, the young man is doing very well, the young boy is doing very well. There is one thing that he has on his side. First and foremost, he's got his brothers and friends by his side. He's got his parents and grandparents by him. He's got the community at large, the church family praying for him. And there is a lot of progress in Sebastian's life. Uh, on behalf of Sebastian, I would want to say thank you all. Keep praying for the young man is picking up. And uh, there are also those that are in different places, different hospitals, and some even at home going through difficult times. Like we know, this pandemic is affecting each and every one of us. We are all going to go through it at some stage, one way or the other. Whether you like it or not, whether you are big, or whether you are small, whether, whether you are fat, whether you are thin, whether you are tall or short, where, no matter what color you are, we are going to go through it one way or the other. But we thank the Lord for one thing, is he loves us, he is protecting us. We haven't had so much deaths like the other countries have gone through. That is a big, big blessing to us as Australia. Let's keep praying. The Lord is with us. And like he always says, fear not. The reason why he says fear not is 
He is always with us and he loves us. He cares for us. And um, on that note, uh, you would find uh, our, 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 our schedules will be affected uh, big time on what we are doing because we don't know and we cannot plan to say so and so is going to be okay to do this or not. It's, 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 it's unpredictable. We don't know. Like today, it was meant to be Pastor Kyle who is supposed to be standing before you preaching. He, he is down with COVID. The next thing, the guy was uh, meant to be coming in, which is uh, Elder Innocent Nyoni, uh, who is, was meant to be preaching next week. So we thought, no, let's swap them around. Let's get Inno to preach today. And then Pastor will preach uh, in Inno's place. Next thing, you know, is a close contact because one of the family members is down with COVID. So uh, anytime, and uh, for you members, please be prepared to be called up to do anything, any day. As long as you're fit and uh, you can go, say to the Lord, here I am. So be prepared when I come calling on your door to say, please come preach. Be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. Thank you very much. Um, the title of our sermon today is, Don't We All? Don't We All? You know, at times when you say, don't we all, what is it that don't we all? Um, let's open our Bibles to the book of uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 11, verse 25. I'm going to read in the NIV version and the NKJV. Uh, Proverbs 11, verse 25, reads in the NIV, A generous person will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And the New King James Version says, The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, this morning for this precious time that you have given us to be with you, communing with you this Sabbath morning. Lord, as we pray to you, Lord, we put before you people who are grieving at this hour, going through a difficult time, having lost their loved ones. We don't forget to pray for the Mbono family who have had a double tragedy, Lord. Losing a grandmother and losing a sister-in-law. Lord, they are going through a difficult time. We ask you to be with them. But most important of all, Lord, we thank you for your comfort that you bring upon those that are grieving. You are the only one who can help us, Lord. And we also thank you for loving us and helping those who are sick. We, we've got reports from young Sebastian and everyone else around, Lord. You know who they are and what they are going through in their lives, but you are protecting us. You are the great physician and we thank you for it. Lord, as we go into this uh, service, Lord, we ask you to be with each and every one of us who is here and each and every one who is at home. We ask all this as we pray. Amen. Knowing that you have been able to help someone is in, in its own a reward. Knowing that you have helped someone is on its own a reward. Because why is it a reward? It's a reward because you will have done what is expected of you. When, when, when God created us, if, if you are listening to the Sabbath school lesson that the panelists presented today, uh, on Thursday's lesson, I remember Brother David saying, we were given uh, three gifts on creation. The first gift was the Garden of Eden, isn't it? The second gift was food. And the third gift was woman. And if, if you know what it is, to have a woman by your side, then you know we've got a gift. And we thank Lord for creating human beings in the form of women. 
they are a blessing to us. Thank you, Lord. Um, why am I saying that? The reason why I'm saying that is the most loving and the most helping people on earth are ladies. If I'm wrong, prove me. But I'm telling you one thing for sure. The world wouldn't be what it is without women. We as men, most of the time, we trample them. We trample over them like they, they, they are not humans, but they still bear with that and go on to continue to be loving and be giving and helping. So women are a big, big, big gift to us, and we have to thank the Lord for that. There's this little story that I'll say. Um, at some time in life, I was seated in my car at a shopping mall. And coming my way from across the parking lot was what society would consider tramp. From his looks, this person who was walking towards me, it showed that he had no car. He had no home, nor did he have clean clothes, and he had no money. There are times when you feel generous, but then there are other times that you are just not in the mood and don't want to be bothered. The book of Matthew, in uh, Matthew 5, Verse 42 reads, the NIV version says, Give to those who ask and don't refuse those who wish to borrow from you. And the NKJV version says, Give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you. Do not turn away. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. It isn't easy always to be charitable. Sometimes you would rather keep your money, sometimes you would rather keep your time, or your energy to yourself. This was one of those don't want to be bothered times for me on this particular day. But this face is a gentle reminder to us all that we should remain open-hearted even when it can be difficult. As this man walked towards me, I say to myself, I hope he doesn't ask me for any money. I was seated in my car. Fortunately, he didn't. He came and sat on the cab nearby, but didn't look like he could have enough money to get a decent meal for the day. After a few minutes, he spoke. That's a very nice car you've got there, he said. He was, a, he was rugged, but he had an air of dignity around him. I said, thanks, and continued listening to the car radio. He sat there quietly, and the expected plea for money never came. So I was torturing myself waiting to hear, can I have some money? As the silence between us widened, something inside me said, ask him if he needs any help. And that's a difficult thing to ask anyone if he needs any help. But I tell you, ladies are very good at that. I'm sure that you would say yes, but I held to the inner voice. So I gathered enough guts and said, 
Do you need any help? He answered in three simple but profound words that I shall never forget. In life, you know what? We often look for wisdom in great men and great women, and we expect it from those of higher learning and accomplishments. I expected nothing but outstretched creamy hands. He spoke the three words that shook me. Don't we all? And truly in life, don't we all need help? At one stage or the other in your life, you will need help. And that help can come from anyone. And I repeat, that help can come from anyone. On this particular day, I was feeling high and mighty, successful and important until those three words hit me like a ton of bricks. I had to think. I had to think. Don't we all? So I was saying to myself, really? I've asked this man, do you need any help? And the question is, don't we all? I needed help, maybe not for bus fare or for a place to sleep, but I needed help. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 19, verse 17. Proverbs 19, verse 17. The New International Version of that uh, verse reads, Those who are gracious to the poor lend to the Lord, and the Lord will fully repay them. And the New King James Version says, that's Proverbs 19, verse 17, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. So, when we see someone who is struggling, when we see someone, wherever he or she is, let's remember to help him or her out. We all, and I repeat, we all need help. In many ways, the mere act of being charitable is its own reward. But as this verse notes, being compassionate to people who are less fortunate is also something that God will definitely reward. Because of this, I reached in my wallet and gave him not only enough for bus fare, but enough to get a warm meal and a few other things for the day. Why did I do this? Because those three little words hit me like a ton of bricks and they still ring in my ears today. Don't we all? We all need help. No matter how much you have, no matter how much you have accomplished, you will need help. I remember some time in 2010, we were home and uh, we received a call from one of my sisters, Sister Grace Casella. So she called on my mobile, I picked up the phone Ah, oh, how brother, what are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. We chatted, chatted, chatted. The next thing, uh, can I speak to my guru? My guru is sister-in-law in my language. So she wanted to speak to Konzi. So I gave Konzi the phone and uh, they spoke. And Sister Grace tells Konzi of land that was going like hot cakes in Byford at a very cheap price. Why? Because Byford then was a country 
town or suburb, whatever you want to call it. So she says, Konzi, get into it, get this land and help yourself. And surely we did act, because at times when you get a gift, don't, don't forget what was said in the Sabbath school lesson. We were given three gifts, the Garden of Eden, food, and woman. So when the Lord gifted Adam and Eve with the Garden of Eden, all he wanted Adam and Eve to do is to till that land. It means he wanted them to work on the Garden of Eden so that they could have something. So if we had sat on our laurels and said, ah, well, Sister Grace has said, yes, there is land out there, and we sit back and relax. We wouldn't have been having the home that we have been living in since 2012 by then. We did some work. Went in, applied, paid in deposits and whatever, and in 2012, the home was built and we are still living in that home. So I want to say thank you to Sister Grace for that. So this is where you get help unsolicited. We didn't ask Sister Grace to go and look for land for us. No, but she saw it fit to advise. And this is what it is to be helpful. Why? Because don't we all need help? You know, when, 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 when COVID hit, the government came up with uh, grants to try and stimulate the economy. So there was grants for building up homes, and as far as I know, the youth around, those that had just come out of college and got into employment, they quickly got into it, but they didn't just get into it. They actually networked. Hey, have you heard that there's this grant that is going along? Go for it if you can. And a number of our youths today have got homes of their own, and they got grants. That money at times you would either get maybe 20,000 and for the first homeowner buyers they were getting around 45,000 and it helped. But the main thing of it is in life we all need help. And that help can come from anyone. So no matter how little you have, no matter how loaded you are with problems, you can give help. There's no question about it. You can give help. Why? Even if it's just a compliment, you can give. You never know when you may see someone that appears to have it all. But one thing for sure is maybe they are waiting on you to give them what they don't have. And what is it that they don't have? Maybe to be a different perspective on life. Maybe it's a respite from daily chaos that only you through a torn world can see. So we can be helped in different forms and in different ways. And when we see that, let's appreciate it and take it on board. For the little ones who go to school, Matthew and uh, those of your age, you know what, when you are at school, young man, when you see and meet someone who is struggling in your class, give them a hand, help them. The main benefit that you'll get out of that is, as you try, let, let, let's suppose maybe you're trying to explain to him uh, part of mathematics, addition or subtraction. The more you try to explain to that person, you're actually making it sink more into yourself. You become a better student. Why? Because if you are able to explain it to someone else until he or she understands, it means you've got it right in you, which is why you'd find teachers are able to explain. They, they are better placed in explaining because they've gone through it so many times and in the process of delivering it to us as students, it helps them understand more. So help out your fellow students. You'll also be helped out in the subjects that you are weak in. So helping out each other is a good thing. The youth at technical colleges, at unis, as you struggle with those assignments, 
They will teach her out. Go out there and find out what is my brother going through. What is he going through? They will teach her out. Look after each other. What is my fellow student going through in life? Is he going through a depression? Is he being affected by the chaos of the world? How can I help? We all need help. And help comes from anyone. In the children's story, we were shown and told that Jesus went and asked this man who had been lying by that pool for years. And he helped him. And when he asked him, do you need any help? Most probably, that, that man would have said, don't we all? But because he knew he really needed that help, he said to him, Lord, yes, definitely. I, I, I can't... I can't do, I can't help myself. Why? Because whenever the water is steered in the pool, someone else jumps in before me, which is why I've been here for all this long. And he was helped. So in life, let's not forget, let's be there for each other. Let's be there for each other. So this man who came to me, who I thought when I saw him was a trump, Maybe he was just a homeless stranger wandering the streets. Or maybe he was more than that. He could have been, this could have been the power of a great Lord who has sent someone to minister to a soul comfortable in themselves. You remember what... Uh, The scripture reading verse says, do you remember what it says? When you welcome anyone into your home, when you see someone who is struggling, don't ignore them. Why? You never know what you are doing. You could actually be welcoming or helping an angel. Which is why you would find the Lord when he says, when I was sick, you came and saw me. When I was naked, you dressed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And then you say, Lord, 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 when did we ever do this? And he says, the least you did to those that you saw going through such difficult times, you were actually doing it to me. Don't we all need help? So please, help somebody. You are only but a custodian of whatever you possess. We come, we go. The in-between defines who truly we are. Hebrews 13, verse 16, our last verse, says... Don't forget to do good and to share what you have because God is pleased with these kinds of sacrifices. Don't forget to do good and to share what you have because God is pleased with these kinds of sacrifices. One of the ways you can demonstrate your love for the Lord is to be compassionate and caring towards those that you encounter here on earth. Don't forget, even a small gesture can mean a great deal. Even a small gesture can mean a great deal. May God bless his word and have a good week.
Let us all stand. As we sing song number 264. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for this day and the words that you did put through me to your people. Lord, as we get into the new week, we ask you, dear Lord, to send your Holy Spirit to be with each and everyone wherever we are. And we thank you, Lord, for the signs that you showed to us in helping us through the difficult times that we go through, in loving us and giving us help when we need it, in protecting us against the different diseases that are going out and uh, affecting a lot of people throughout the world. Lord, we are appreciative and thank you so much. And we will always try, Lord, to walk in your footsteps. We ask you, Lord, to send your Holy Spirit to be with us so that we do not move to the left or to the right, but stay on course, Lord. Lord, whenever we are requested and asked to help, give us the spirit, give us the energy, and give us the will, Lord, to help out. For that is what you are, Lord. You came to this earth and you put your life on the cross for the sake of us sinful people. We thank you for that, Lord, if only we could follow you so that when you come for the second time, we are going to be found ready and willing to come and join you. Because you said, I'm going to build up mansions up in heaven for you so that where I am, you can be. Lord, help us to get ready. We ask all this I pray. Amen. Amen.